and welcome to The Writing Forge, where we discuss tips and tricks for honing your writing. I'm Bonnie. I'm Miranda. And we're your hosts. Let's Let's get get into into it. it. Welcome to today's episode of The Writing Forge. I'm Miranda. I'm Bonnie. And today we have... Heather. Heather. Welcome, Heather. Hi. So how did you get into the writing industry before we get started? Today we're talking about plotting, but how did you... (laughs) Before we go. Uh, Well, for me, I've written a lot over the years, and my husband has always been my biggest cheerleader, and he was like, you should do this, you should do this, you should do this, and then one year, he said, I don't want presents anymore, I want you to write me stories, oh. so for Christmas and birthdays, I started writing stories, and he's like, I really think you should pursue this, and it's so interesting, but I was in my veterinarian's office one day, and there was a book sitting there, and it was by Margaret Misushima, and I was like, oh, does your wife write? And he said, yeah. And so we got into this huge conversation about how like regular people actually can write books. And I was like, (laughs) this is a huge thing for me. So I decided to start taking classes because I've had stories in my mind that I wanted to do. And I've had all these great ideas, but I never figured out how to get from beginning to end Mm. because I would get in the middle. I'm like, I don't know where I'm going with this. And I would just drop it and put it away. So I took some adult education courses at Front Range, Mm. which got me really interested in story structure. Um, So I'm really like passionate about story structure, which is a strange thing to have a passion (laughs) for, but um, I really, I believe that that's why I was actually able to finish my first novel. So it helped me like figure out exactly where I was missing things and what I needed to. So, so are you a planner? Did you? I am an absolute planner. Okay. (laughs) In everything. I make lists and, and um, plans for everything that I do. So definitely for writing, it's essential just for me. I mean, it's not for everybody, but I think that the important thing about planning is that you have to allow yourself the flexibility Mm -hmm. to divert from that plan. So I will plan, 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 but then when it comes to writing, I let my characters do what they need to do, and sometimes they do some really surprising things that I'm not anticipating. Well, that's the best, because then you know your characters have really come to life. Definitely. How do you go about plotting? Well, when I was in my first class, they went through like the nine plot, the nine point story structure, which I thought was really intriguing. So my first novel, I laid it out exactly like that. And then I ran across Save the Cat, Mm. which is really very similar, but it breaks it down into 15. um, 15. So there's more, there's more specific points to hit, which was also really helpful. But there's a big difference between the two that I found. And that one is the B story character. So in the nine-point story structure, that isn't included. And in Save the Cat, the B character is someone that the main character meets who becomes a pivotal part of the story, either a a love interest or a a best friend, that they would not have met had it not been for the inciting incident. Hmm. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So the first story that I wrote, um, the sidekick character was someone that the main character already knew. Mm -hmm. And... I don't think that that story would have been the same if I had included a B character type. Um, The subsequent three novels that I've written since then have all had a B character, and I think it's worked out, but I think maybe sometimes that feels forced for me. Yeah. So I might really think about, like, the next time I – my next novel, just making two different outlines where one includes it – as the specific, like, here's the B character, and one, it does not include it that way. So it can be someone that they've always known. I feel like that is an interesting thing for us to discuss, maybe, is how do you decide which structure you're going to use for for a given story? Yeah, that, because there's, anyone who is familiar with plotting and plotting structure knows that there's dozens and dozens. There's the three act, there's the five act, there's the Elizabethan four act, there's the nine plot, there's Save <laughs> seven the Cat. Point. There's I like seven point. Hero's journey. Hero's journeys. Uh, I mean, I think if we're honest, I think most of them boil down to the hero's journey in the end, but. Sometimes, I think. I it, guess if you believe, in, if you believe Campbell, but. <laughs> right. So, yeah, so how. How have you decided, Miranda? How have I decided, oh, that implies that I plot? Um, <laughs> well, well, maybe that's so, a good point. Like, Because you can use structure after the fact. So 
You can. Um, and so my story writing, like I'm still working on figuring out the process because I definitely started off just, you know, here's a page and I'm going to go. But uh, I never finished anything that way hmm. um, for me personally. And so it's like, OK, how do I where does it go next? And so I've tried I've tried a few different things. The main thing that I'm trying to ask myself, especially since the one I'm working on right now is so unconventional, it's probably going to have to be self-published, not going to lie. <laughs> um, but it's I really focus on asking a question and answering it. Hmm. So I focus on like presenting a problem to my character and then having the character trying to work through that. And in the process of trying to work through that question, uh, other questions get brought up. Mm. And so uh, I guess uh, that is closer to uh, Mary Robinette Kowal's Mice Quotient, yeah. where you open up all the boxes mm -hmm. and then ending the story is trying to close all the boxes. And so that is that is what I do. Heather, What? how do you go about choosing? Um, well, it's interesting. When I write short stories, I really don't plan them at all. Oh, yeah. I just kind of, I feel like it's way too hard to try to shove nine <laughs> or 15 points into a 5,000 word story. And I find that I kind of fall into that sort of rhythm naturally. And I don't know if just because I've read so much or watched so many movies. So many <laughs> movies. Um, but movies aren't short. No, but like you can see that structure laid out in front yeah. of you all the time over and over. And I think it's just the same way that I decide what voice and what perspective my story is going to be in. It kind of tells me and I know that sounds really weird but so my my process is it, the first thing is just a giant information dump like I'll be writing this story in my head for a couple of years and finally you know whichever one is yelling the most <laughs> is the one that I go to next so and is this like writing an outline you mean dumping everything out no or it's just not like a even draft? an outline okay. just Ideas. here's everything I know about this story okay. like here's everything I want to have including like this specific piece of dialogue that I thought of at three in the morning when I couldn't <laughs> sleep so I had to write it down oh, okay. um, and so then I get this giant mass of stuff and just kind of look at it and start to plug it into an outline and I think the next one I'm writing actually won't have your typical B character mm -hmm. B story because it's just not set up that way so the person who technically is that sidekick comes in very early and feel, not halfway through. I feel like that's really important to, to like just because you like one structure or you liked one structure for one story doesn't mean you have to follow it all the time. And, and you can deviate very from true. the structure in a given story, too. Yeah. I was going to say, as an editor, Bonnie, mm -hmm. like, do you ever use story structure to like... I'm not going to say correct because that is the wrong term, but do you ever like, I don't know, use like story structure as a matrix to put someone's story on to like see if that's where like problems are? Like how do you use story structure in editing? Yeah, definitely. I think that's like, it's more like I don't, not on everything I do, do I bother looking at the structure, but if something is broken, then I'll, or, or feels not quite satisfying, then I'll, I'll pull it up and I'll, I'll break it down. I'll, I'll make an outline out of it. I mean, actually, it's really helpful if an author has an outline that they've made and can send it to me because then I don't have to do that part. But um, Tips and tricks, guys. Right. <laughs> send and, your editor your outline. Yes. That would be great. Anything you have, I think it's great. Um, and then I'll look and see, well, okay, they have, here they've got the midpoint, okay, but they don't, oh, they don't have this part. They're missing this thing. And, and look, they, they set it up for that, but they didn't follow through. So so then I know, okay, well, you're missing this and I can I can say that. So yeah, definitely. And, and I think that's where it comes in handy if you're not a planner, if you're a pantser, you can do that yourself too when you get to the end of the book. Or a discovery writer for people yes, who don't know writer. that terminology. That's, yes, that's the NaNoWriMo. I used to not like pantser. I used to always say discovery writer, but now it's, <laughs> it's just faster to say pantser, so I do. But yeah, if you get to the end of your book and then then try to see have you followed a structure or not, and then you can... It can be a diagnostic tool yes, rather than exactly. a guiding force. Rather than a planning tool, yeah. And I think it's really important. I am part of a lot of different writers groups online, and some of the advice that people have for each other is really <laughs> interesting and I hear a lot of like it's your story write it however you want and I mean that's true <laughs> yes but if you have commercial <laughs> goals aspirations yeah. for your writing your readers have certain expectations that they're coming into it with I mean even for a romance novel like there are some I very mean, romance specific, is probably the most expectations super strict and if you mess that up your readers are going to come after you with torches and pitchforks um, 
So I think that if you intend to have your writing read by other people and published, either even if it's just self-published on Amazon, I think that you owe it to your readers to follow a structure that they are anticipating because I think that when someone is finished with a project, when someone's finished reading it, that's when they're going to feel satisfied Hopefully. is if you've yeah. done a pretty good mm-hmm. job. And like like you said, I mean, certainly you can deviate in places, but I think overall it definitely just that basic three-part structure yeah. is super important. And if you have a – the end of your book just drags on and on. <laughs> Lord of the Rings. <laughs> no offense, Tolkien. Mm-hmm. But if it drags on and on at the end, you know, people are just not going to be as satisfied with that ending. And, and if you've set up – if you have an ending that you haven't set up properly, yes. then that's another problem. Oh, yeah. So. Promises and payout. Yeah. So I thought we could talk about um, what are our favorite story structures or maybe just one that is sticking out in your mind right now that you like – to, to use one thing that I was thinking of, I don't, I don't know, that's my ultimate favorite, but I really like the Hollywood formula. And the part of it that I like is the, the relationship character and the arc that you follow with the relationship character throughout a story. I feel like that can lead to some really good emotional and character development and some satisfying endings. So that, that, that was on my mind. How about you guys? Um, I think Save the Cat has become a personal favorite, and I agree with you, like that development of not just the main character's story arc, but you want to see a lot of characters Mm -hmm. growing and changing, and I think that's something that I missed Mm. until I actually started like really looking at that. I'm like, well, you know, this character may have been a little flat, so (laughs) um, taking your your supporting characters through changes, I think, is super important and I think for me, Save the Cat really helps to solidify that. The other thing that I like about it is that in addition to the 15 beats, it breaks things down even further. And um, it talks about how if you end of the first act have things are going terribly for your character, then you would have what's called a false victory um, or a false defeat. And then if something is going really well for your character, then you have a false victory. And that kind of sets the scene for the next um, part of the story. And then near the end, they've she's got things listed like um, the high tower attack and, um, again, a false victory and then regrouping the troops and then the final victory. And I think that's really important and helpful to me to have that that all broken out and I don't use all of those elements in everything that I write but so you can kind of plug and play those different yeah and when I'm outlining I literally like that is what my outline looks like but not by the time I'm done writing it (laughs) it's kind of all over the place and I really should start going back and changing my outline to what it actually ended up being but especially if I'm going to give it to an editor (laughs) because then they'll be like well this is utter nonsense (laughs) so this isn't what you wrote (laughs) right So for well, me, honestly, sorry, I was oh, that's actually a really good point. Like getting the outline. A lot of times I have an author send me like the blurb on the back of their book also. And I'll be like, OK, you didn't quite do this in the actual book. So if you want to match the blurb, then here's what you should do. So, yeah, things like that are helpful. Otherwise, the blurb needs to change. Yeah, to one of them needs the... to change. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I was going to say for me, it's probably like the three act or the five act because I don't emotional Depth and people are welcome to argue with me on this. I'm sure I have many a many a critique partner who's like, actually, no, you're wrong. But <laughs> I like to think that uh, the emotional stuff comes to me more easily than actual overarching mm. plot structure, and so that tends to be what I need more help with. And uh, and so if I had to pick one, that would probably what I'd pick just so that way, like I get that down and I get that done. So, because, yeah, the emotion, the emotional part of it is something I like to think I struggle with less. Again, my, my critique partners are welcome to at me. So, yeah. And so I guess how do you how do you guys like if something isn't working out, how do you pivot? Like, how do you do you, like do you change the outline? Like if if something in your outline isn't working, like do you backtrack and see like where like is the problem earlier? Is the problem with this beat or is it the direction that you're headed? I guess, how do you diagnose that? And then how do you how do you fix that? Or do you just like, okay, this train's off the tracks. Let's just keep <laughs> going. Like, <laughs> uh, For me, I my first draft, I never look back. Okay. And I usually do my first draft during NaNoWriMo. So every year 
I've got like this new project and Even now I November. have projects stacking up on top of each other, but mm-hmm. that's okay. So I don't go back. And uh, if something gets derailed, I do just kind of go with it. Um, but the second novel that I wrote, as soon as I hit the end, I was like, oh my, this could be so much better if I... <laughs> and so um, when I went back to edit it, I put all of my scenes on cards and stuck them on the wall. And then I wrote down every problem with every scene and then the things that I needed to change in order to make this new ending workable. And it made, I didn't want to do it because it's so much work, (laughs) but I knew it would make for a better story. It just would. The ending was too predictable, the, the first one. So... I'm glad that I did it, but it was a pain in the butt. <laughs> so are you an index card person? Do you I outline am. with index cards? Um, no, I outline in a Word document. And like my last outline was like 30,000 words. Oh, wow. Ooh, How dang. long was the novel? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, by the time I was done, it was like 110,000. Okay. All right. It's but practically I as your draft. <laughs> I put stuff in there like bits of dialogue that I don't want to forget mm-hmm. and just notes to myself. So it's not like that outline that you learn how to make in school it's not pretty but I don't want to forget things because I'm over 40 so (laughs) forgetting things comes naturally I'm not but I also don't have that problem children (laughs) um so I I think it is important to keep in mind too that the structure that you're using might not be like you might have started with one structure and you might find as you're writing the book that actually it would fit a different structure better and it's totally fine I think I liked your example of well I got to the end and I realized I need to change it you can also do that in the middle I, I do think I subscribe more to the um just keep writing as long as you're not you're not stuck, just keep writing, and then you can go back and fix it afterwards. Like, that's what editing is for. And then if you need to change the structure at the beginning so it matches the end, you can totally do that. So, yeah, I think that's really important. Awesome. I, I think, think that, we're – yeah. yeah. <laughs> go, Miranda. <laughs> I was going to say – On I think, the same page. <laughs> I think we're about out of time today. So thank you so much for joining us, Heather. Yeah, thanks for having me. And for our question for all of our listeners today, we wanted to ask you, what are you struggling with in plotting your story? Maybe we can uh, – we can uh, help each other out and brainstorm some solutions. Hit us up on our socials. Links are in the episode description. That's all the time we have for today, folks. Thanks for joining us for this episode of The Writing Forge, an NCW podcast brought to you by Nagano Press. To learn more about The Writing Forge and our parent company, Northern Colorado Writers, be sure to check out our website at northerncoloradowriters.com. Check out our social links in the description. You can subscribe to The Writing Forge wherever podcasts are aired. If you like this episode, you'd really help us out by rating and reviewing. If you're looking for more informational writing content, be sure to become an NCW member. Stay sharp, my friends. Stay sharp, my friends.